Hey, what's good, YouTube? I'm Dewan. We're back with part seven of our RIP series, Routing Information Protocol, where we're connecting networks, site A to site B. Now, in the previous videos, I have those in the playlist. You can get, click the link here, and they should also be in the description below. If you guys got questions, please feel free to hit me up. But now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of configuring RIP, and then also doing ACLs, but in this video, we're just gonna focus on RIP how to configure it, how to troubleshoot it, and making sure it works. In the previous videos, the way I did it was I talked about everything, and then I configured it. But what I want to do in this video is I'm going to configure RIP, and then we're going to talk about it later. Before we get started, RIP is the routing information protocol. What we're doing is taking site A, which is network, and connecting it to site B, making these PCs be able to ping these PCs. Now here are 10 things to know about RIP. You can feel free to go over these. We'll talk about them as we go through the lab. All right, the first thing we're going to do is pull up R1 on site A. And we're going to go through this. So if you guys have questions, hit the com comment section below. But the first thing I'm going to do is log in with the password console and then get into the privileged exec mode with the password Cisco. Now we're in here. We need to see what interfaces are configured. So we'll do a show IP interface brief. I have everything configured. Um, looks like all we really need to do is enable RIP on this device. We got VLAN 10, 20, and 30 configured. And then also we have the serial interface configured. So let's just go in here to configuration mode or global configuration mode. And let's go into router RIP. Now, router RIP enables the routing process on this device. The first thing we need to do is tell it version 2 because version 1 is a class for routing protocol and does not support VLSM. That's why you use version two. And then we also do the no auto summary command. I have a video on discontinuous network somewhere up here. If you guys got questions, hit the comment section below. Hit me up. I'm be glad to answer them if you do have some. But check that discontinuous network video out. It's great. Now, we're going to enter the network command. We need to enable the VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30 in the RIP routing process on this device. So we need to go 192.168.10.0, 192.168.20.0. And then we need to do the same for VLAN 30.0. And then the next thing we need to do is enable it on the serial interface. 65.200.220. Boom, that's good to go. And just to be sure that we have this, we're gonna do a no shut on that, just to make sure we had that up and running. Now we can go show IP route. And you see what's in the router table. Now the serial interface, the route is not in the router table because the link is not up. I believe the other side is down because if we do a show IP interface brief, you will see that the serial interface is down, down, meaning that it's not administrative down, but it's something not connected. Either it's not plugged in or the other side is shut down. So we'll do a write mail and save that. Then we'll also do a debug IP rip so we can watch the IP, the rip process as it happens live. And so what this is saying right now is it's sending these updates out of this center. Well, it's sending these um, updates now. Multicast, this is the multicast address that RIP uses. Since it does not have a connection to another interface running RIP, it's just going to send these out multicast out of all the interfaces. That's the reason why you enable the passive um, interface for different interfaces so it doesn't send RIP because right now what it's doing is sending it out multicast out of all the interfaces. So that's just something to note. We're not going to cover that here, but... If you guys want to know about the passive interface command or passive interface default command, let me know. But that's the reason why you do it because it will send out uh, multicast to try and send RIP to other interfaces or to other routers. Now, the next thing we need to do is show IP interface brief. And as you can see, the serial interface is the serial interface on site B is not configured or R2 is not configured. So what we need to do is go to global, global configuration mode, go in interface serial 
and then do a description connection to R1 and now we need to assign an IP address this IP address is a slash 30 meaning that it has four IP addresses in this subnet meaning it has two usable IP addresses and two that aren't the first is not usable is going to be the network ID and then the last one is going to be the broadcast boom we got that configured and it's a slash 30 sort of be 252 now I have a video on subnet in here too check that out let me know I have you subnet like a boss Pretty soon we're going to be doing this VLSM, but that's coming pretty soon. Let's just hold off. Let's focus on this rip. Get this done. I thank y'all for rocking with me. Let's move forward. Now we got all that done. We need to do a no shut. Bring that up. You see R1 is linked to R2 turns green. We now have connection and we are rocking and rolling. The next thing we need to do is router rip. You can either exit from here or just type router rip. We'll exit. And we'll type router rip, enabling rip routing process on this device. And then we'll do a no, um, and then we'll do a version two to tell this to run version two. Now, if I told it, if I didn't tell the version two, then it will have a problem um, with the rip routing process because it's only going to send and receive in version one rather than the other side is only going to send and receive in version two. Then you'll have a problem with your rip talking to each other. So with that being said, version two, now the summary, boom, network. Mm, we need to enable VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30 in this routing process. So we'll go 192.168.110.0. Then we'll change this to 20.0. Then we'll change this to 30. And now before we even get this started, let me do a um, debug IP rip on this device so you guys can watch this routing process on this device too. And then we'll go in here back into router rip and then we'll enable it on the serial interface. And now it'll start sending and receiving rip on this interface. Network 209.65.200.222. Boom, and you see how fast that happens? Let me do a UR, let me get out of here and do a UR, cause it's already there. All right, so as you can see, it's sending multicast out of all these interfaces, but then it realizes, once it sends the multicast out of here, it makes the connection with R1, and now it's receiving, it realizes, okay, it's receiving here, and then the next update, let me turn it back on, so you guys can see. It's received them from here. It received the VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30 from um, site A. And then we'll have to wait. I think it takes about, actually, I can tell you now. So if you do a show IP protocols, all right, we can do a UR now. To a UR means U undebug R means turn off all debugging. Now, real world, you don't want to do debugging unless you talk to your boss about it because debugging will ball down your device. If you have a whole bunch of routes, and a ho just don't do debugging live. Focus on your lab work and learning and packet tracing before you start experimenting on live networks. Now, with that being said, all right, let's go up here to, as you can see, it's, it's building my updates, sending updates. Boom, good to go. So we do a show IP protocols. You can see all the the, route, the routes that it's routing for. And then if you look in here in RIP, it says it's sending updates every 30 seconds, which it does. And then the next update is doing 19 seconds. Um, invalid after 180 seconds, meaning after three minutes. And then the hold down is 180 seconds. And then it's flushed out of your routing table at the 240 seconds. So what is that? Four minutes. So after four minutes, it's flushed out of your routing table. So if we go and show IP route, you will see the new routes in your routing table. Boom. All these are configured on R1. And now you can see they're in our routing table. What, a couple things to note. This 120 is the administrative distance for RIP. And this 1 is the metric that RIP uses. So that means it's one hop away, meaning one hop here to get to these networks, to VLAN 20. 10, 20, and 30. 
I'm trying to think what else I need to tell you guys. I mean, I, I've, I think we pretty much cut. Let's go back into the show IP protocols. Let's go over a couple things. Now, I, we talked about um, how often RIP up, updates, how often it flushes from the routing table. And this, there's a timer that you will see when there's a problem with a route. The timer will just start ticking. You will see it right up here in the routing table. But right here, what we're going to focus on is okay so you're sending and receiving version two that's what i was talking about so that's that's what's going on with that and then there are no um acl set for this so it's not filtering any routes the interfaces that is using to send rip basically all the interfaces that you have enabled is going to send out that multicast um to those interfaces so what you will want to do is set up passive interfaces here and just have it on serial um, zero slash zero slash zero if that's the only interface that you wanted to communicate with uh, run rip on. Now, these are the, the networks that you're routing for. These are all the ones that we entered you know, with the network command. And let's see. This is our um, RIP router information sources. This is what we have. Um, connected so and as you can see the last update was 18 seconds ago if I was to run this again that timer would change now 16 seconds ago yeah and that's pretty much it the administrative distance the default is 120 went 120 for internal and 120 for external and that's pretty much it so if we do a right mem that's good to go now we can go through and try and ping some devices so I have PC uh, one on VLAN 10 on site A. Let's see if I can do IP config. What's my IP address? It's dot 11. So I bet you um, PC1 or PC5 on VLAN 10 on site B will be the same IP address. So let's go 192.168.1.1. One ten dot eleven. Is it dot eleven? Or we'll have to see. Maybe it's not dot eleven. So let's see what IP address this is. We're going here IP config. Since we know what PC one is on site A, let's do that. Okay, so we'll ping the other side. One nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot eleven. So now you can see we we're pinging this PC here. We're able to ping this PC here. From this PC here, and we can do a trace route trace RT 192.168.10.11. And you can see it went from this is the route it took, it went from um, R2's gigabit or sub interface for VLAN 10 or gigabit slash zero. Dot 10 or whatever, whatever you want to call it, the sub interface for gigabit zero slash zero out of this interface, even though that's not listed because that's not a hop, actually, it's the same router into this interface on R1 and then exit it. This interface reaching this, so actually, so this is the default gateway for VLAN 10 on site B or R2. And then this is going to be the um, WAN interface or the serial interface for R1 on site A. And then this is going to be the actual um, PC1 on VLAN 10 on site A. That's pretty much it. I mean, what we can do next is let's do SSH minus L, Dewan, and let's SSH into, let's say, site A, 209 dot 65 dot 200 dot 225 boom password is going to be cisco and we just ssh into r1 on that device i mean on site a so as you can see here's r1 for site a and then we do a show ip interface brief boom and then you can see all the vlans for um site a and we can exit and we're back into the um, the command prompt for 
PC5 on VLAN 10 on um, site B. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we covered pretty much everything on how to configure RIP, how to make it talk. We SSH from site B into site A. We ping um, back. We can actually ping. Let's ping the other side just to make sure we have um, we communicate back and forth because it could be an ACL that allows us to go out but doesn't allow anything to go in. So we need to make sure that nothing's blocking this side. So let's go ping 192.168.110.12. Boom, we're good to go. And now let's let's do a trace route there just so you guys can see how that goes. 192.168.110. Um, what is that 12 and you can see that and now let's do a SSH minus L Dewan and then let's do the the default gateway of R2 for um, VLAN 10 so 110.1 boom password is gonna be Cisco and now we're in R2 as you can see that works also so we can ping back and forth from both sides and we can SSH into both sides. Let me do a right mem from here to say the configs. I hope this video was informative for you. If you guys got questions, hit the comment section below. I'm really enjoying this series. The next video will be over ACLs. Then we're gonna wrap this up. Then we're gonna be in my home lab configuring OSPF. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You got any questions, like I said, hit the comment section below. Peace.